Go inside the Crimson Tide. Tider Insider TV with Rodney Orr and Gary Harris. The Tide is getting prepared to begin what they hope will be a lengthy run in the postseason. Alabama finished the regular season with an overall record of 20 and 10, 12 and 4 in the SEC. Now they get set for the SEC tournament. They'll open up play in the quarterfinals on Friday against the winner of the first round game between Georgia and Auburn. Both teams, Alabama has already beaten Auburn twice. Right now, the only thing we're promised is one game. That's it. You know, so our guys need to understand that and understand that in order for us to have an opportunity to continue to play and continue to, to, to enjoy the season and to, to, to enjoy each other, is that we've got we've to be prepared to win. And good evening, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Tider Insider TV presented by Buffalo Rock. Tonight, Rodney, we're enjoying ice cold Diet Pepsi. Alongside Rodney Orr from TiderInsider.com, I'm Gary Harris. As we and uh, Coach Grant both alluded to, the SEC tournament could be the springboard for Alabama to the NCAA tournament. Right now, the Tide is thought to be on the bubble. Here's what the dance card looks like at the moment. Let's take a look at Alabama's resume, if you will, Rod. And, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You know, maybe SOS and, and RPI and all that carry a lot of weight. I think Alabama should already be in the tournament based on their work. 20 wins in the regular season, 12 and 4 in the SEC, SEC West Division champs. I can't believe you could go 12 and 4 in the conference and be a bubble team, but they are. The RPI 79, there's the strength of schedule, only 125. You know, not bad. RPI teams won uh, through 50. Alabama went 3-3, three and three, but you see the 101 through 200 only going 5-4 and four in those games and 1-3 and three against RPI teams. 51 through 100 has certainly held Alabama back, but uh, they probably need to win one in Atlanta. Let's discuss. Alabama closes out the regular season this past Saturday with a good home win against Georgia. Now, listen, Georgia's a quality basketball team. I think they should be in. I'm having a hard time buying the argument that Tennessee should be in over Alabama, even though they've got some quality non-conference wins. Alabama won on their floor. Tennessee's overall SEC record, not nearly even close to what Alabama's is. But, Rodney, the bottom line is everybody that follows these things says the Tide has got to win at least one game in Atlanta to have a shot. Uh, Digger Phelps said he thinks they're in, Gary. They should be in. And, you know, you look at it at 12-4 and four in the SEC, and it's almost, you know, it's almost unimaginable that, the, you know, first of all, that they're 12-4 that they're and four in the SEC. I mean, it was clearly unexpected. But, uh, you know, you would certainly think that with that record in the SEC that they would be in. You know, here's, here's one thing. Anthony Grant has taken the high road consistently, says, you know, we can't control it. I think one reason is he wants to focus on playing well in Atlanta. But I guarantee you, win or not against uh, Georgia or Auburn on Friday, if he doesn't get in, I, I think his disappointment is, is going to come out. If you go 12-4 and four in the SEC and can't get in the NCAA tournament, it's going to set, set a dangerous precedent, I can tell you that. Yeah, again, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. But then again, Gary, if Alabama wins a game or two, then, you know. Or three. Or three. They win three. We know they're in. And I'm sure that's what Coach Grant is telling his team. Hey, take care of business in Atlanta. Take it out of the committee's hands. Win the SEC tournament and go in with a lot of momentum. Well, obviously, the debate over Alabama's inclusion or exclusion is not limited to the selection committee. Fans, commentators, conference coaches even weighing in. On Monday, Florida's Billy Donovan and Kentucky's John Calipari gave their opinion on the Tide and another bubble team from the SEC, the Georgia Bulldogs. Both of those teams beat us. Alabama has played well all year. And that's why I say we should be getting six teams. And now people got to advance here in this tournament. Now they don't have to go to the finals and all that, but you got to advance a little bit. You got to help your cause. And I think that'll be a big part of uh, how this all plays out. Some of it will be, you know, how many spots open up. But I think this league deserves half of our teams to be in the NCAA tournament. I feel bad for Anthony from this standpoint. You know, he wins the West, get 12 wins in this league. You know, there used to be a time where that was a sure shot, uh, definite NCAA tournament berth. Um, you know, people talk about the RPI in the West. I, I don't look at it that way. I think one of the things that's maybe hurt Anthony a little bit probably is some things that took place in November and December for him against some of the people he played against. And I hope for Anthony, the selection committee looks at the progress, you know, their team has made. His team is an NC tournament team, and they could go in there and they could do damage. 
Well, Ron, right, certainly uh, John Calipari and, and uh, Billy Donovan know how good this Alabama team is. You would expect them to stump for another league member, and that's expected. But I agree with Calipari. I think six teams from the SEC should go. And I know the Big East is awesome, but they're talking about 11 or 12 teams from the Big wow. East going to the NCAA tournament. Uh, would I put the SEC on par with the uh, Big East? No, I wouldn't. But we're not talking about 11 or 12 teams. We're talking about five from the East and one from the West being Alabama. So I, I think Alabama should get in, but as Coach Calipari also said, and you've already said, you know, probably going to have to go to Atlanta and win at least a game to make a stronger case. And Billy Donovan, that was interesting what he said, 12-4, and four, won in the West one time, that was a shoe-in. Yeah, and like I said, I think it should be now, but uh, maybe I'm a little biased too. All right, good day for some Alabama basketball players. The coaches announced their all-ACC teams. First team selection, the junior forward from Montgomery, Jamichael Green. The Tide's leading scorer and rebounder makes the first team. High-flying sophomore forward Tony Mitchell makes the second team. And this is a no-brainer. Trevor Relliford makes the all-freshman team. He had an outstanding year. But uh, there is a, a, a snub on the all-SEC team, at least from an Alabama perspective. You might have thought Anthony Grant would be the coach of the year after what Alabama did. He did not get it. Instead, it went to his good friend and former boss, Billy Donovan. Let's discuss, Rodney. And, and again, nothing against the job Donovan has done. Great job. They won the conference. But... People expected them yeah. to compete for the conference. Alabama was picked ninth overall out of 12 teams, fourth or fifth in the West, and this is a team that won the West going away, finished one game behind Florida for the overall SEC championship. I don't know how you don't give it to Anthony Grant based on expectations for his team versus well, Florida. I think you just stated the entire case. I don't know how it can be put any better than that, Gary, and certainly I would agree with everything you said. And, again, when you look at it, you know, uh, Billy Donovan's team expected to do what they did, maybe even better. And uh, when you look at Anthony Grant on the other side, uh, no one expected 12 and 4 win the West. I mean, I think it certainly, you know, surprised everyone. It did. And Florida, by some picks, was a preseason Final Four right. team, and they may wind right. up being right. a Final Four team. They're very, very talented. All right, let's turn to football now and. Uh, you know, it just keeps on happening for Alabama in terms of football recruiting and uh, the latest commitment coming this past weekend at a junior day. All right, Rodney, I want you to give us some insight on Brandon Green. I didn't know anything about him, but the more you read, the more you like. 6'6", 285, very athletic, projects as a left tackle. His coach says easily going to weigh 315, 320, maybe even 325 in college. As I mentioned, he's got the long arms. He's an athletic kid. This may be one of those that we look at right now and we say, who's Brandon Green? Next year at this time, we may be saying one of the premier offensive tackles well, in basketball. football. When you look at him, Gary, what you're looking at, you're looking at a package in terms of his size, his potential, and what he does off the field. I mean, he's a great kid. He does the things he needs to do in the classroom. And, again, athletically, it's all there. I mean, he's been timed at under 4'9 in the 40, so he moves very well. And I know when I talked to his coach, Ray Bonner, about him, he just exuded – you know, with uh, confidence in what this young man's potential is. And, and when you look at Brandon Green, again, he's got that great height, Gary, and you talk about those, those arms and, 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 and his frame to add the weight and, you know, his ability to move. You know, he's athletic. And when you're talking about a potential left tackle, which is what, you know, he's projected as, you know, you're talking about a guy that has the tools to, to become one of those. And, and that's a very difficult, the most difficult, perhaps position on the offensive line in terms of athletic ability. All right, sounds good. And still to come on TITV, Rodney will have more on recruiting as we look at some of the top juniors that Alabama is chasing for 2012. They'll soon be seniors. But up next, we'll remember one of the most popular football assistants in Crimson Tide history. We'll look back to the life and times of the very fondly remembered dude Hennessy. What a man. Also, we'll be taking your phone calls and getting to your emails. Give us a ring, 205 348 WVUA, that's 348-9882, or you can email us, TITV at WVUATV.com. You're watching the station and the show that brings you Tighter Insider TV presented each Tuesday night by Buffalo Rock. Well, Lawrence Dude Hennessy, one of the most colorful and most popular assistant football coaches in Alabama history, died at his home in Tuscaloosa last week. Dude coached on the defensive line for Coach Paul Bryant from 1960 through 1976. He was on four national championship teams as an assistant. He later served with the Alabama National Alumni Association, also as the director of the athletic dorm, Bryant Hall, and as associate director of Tide Pride. Hennessy was first connected with Coach Bryant at the University of Kentucky, where he was a 150-pound defensive end who lettered all four years. While at Alabama, he earned a reputation as a prankster and great storyteller and was one of the most outgoing coaches on the staff. Coach Hennessy was 81 years old. 
and certainly he'll be missed. And few people knew Coach Hennessy better than another former Alabama assistant, Clem Griska. A few years ago, we had an opportunity to sit down with Coach Griska about his time at Alabama, and he told us a funny story regarding Coach Bryant and Dude. Back in the 1960s, Alabama was playing at Vanderbilt and unexpectedly fell behind big early in the game. And Coach Bryant obviously wanted to know what the heck was going on, and Coach Hennessy was in no mood to try and explain it to him. They've got us 14 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Oh, Lee, I, I was sweating bullets and everything because he's going to pick on someone, and I was most logical. And so he comes over, and he, I had to fully grab it. He said, hello, hello. And no one answers anything. He said, hello. And dude Hennessy's upstairs on the phone. So dude's trying to get away from me. He's scared to do it, so he gives him some static. He goes, <laughs> And Coach Bryant comes back and says, GD, phone it, check it, got static and everything in it. He throws it down. So I wait until he gets down there a little bit and I pick it up. I said, dude, he said, don't you ever hand that telephone to him again. <laughs> And that's just one of, uh, of, of many stories about Dude Hennessy. You and I both had the pleasure of knowing him personally, uh, and I think that both, we've said it already, but what a great guy. What a guy. I mean, he was incredible, even in recent years, Gary, you know, just seeing him around, and he would always stop me and want to talk about recruiting, talk about the team. And, you know, you mentioned the fact that he could always tell great stories, and he could, and he loved to tell them, too, and he mm -hmm. did it. He was very colorful in doing so, and... Uh, you know, he was a fantastic guy. And a heck of a football coach, too. Well, up next, Roddy will have his recruiting roundup for this week. It's one of the most popular segments on the show. Also, we'll get to your phone calls. That's something that's very popular as well. 205-348-9882, or you can email us, and uh, we'll get those email questions and comments on as well. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. Rodney Alabama off to a fast start for 2012 in football recruiting, but uh, still a number of players out there that they've got their sights set on. Of course, quarterback-wise, we know about Jameis Winston out of Hueytown. We know about Grayson Lambert out of Georgia. But another name on the uh, watch list is Anthony Alford, one of these dual-threat athletic phenom-type quarterbacks out of Pedal, Mississippi. Yeah, very athletic. Gary plays two sports. Alabama's already offered Anthony, and uh, he's an outstanding prospect. I think when you look at him, uh, Certainly Ole Miss and Mississippi State are going to be in the mix very strongly, but he does like Alabama. He's, he's had an opportunity to talk to Coach Saban and was very impressed. And uh, so, you know, guy to watch, certainly. All right, when it comes to playing wide receiver in the SEC, we know this. Unless you're, you better be 6'4", about 230 and catch everything, or you better be able to fly. And Chris Black has got that SEC speed. Explosive. I mean, he really looks good. You watch him on tape. Gary reminds you of some of those guys that they've had in, at Florida under Urban Meyer that can take it the distance in a snap. And, uh, you know, he came to Alabama this past weekend, came with his family. You know, Chris was one of those guys down in Florida that always thought, well, maybe Florida State or even Florida would be, you know, where he would end up staying in state. But he was blown away by Alabama. There's no question about that. Even coach, his head coach there at in Jacksonville told me uh, yesterday that, you know, he thought that Chris was leaning strongly to Alabama right now. Again, it's really early, but, you know, Alabama made a strong impression on him. Another receiver, another Floridian that's high on Alabama is Malcolm Lewis out of Miramar. Yeah, another outstanding wide receiver, Gary, and I think Alabama certainly, you know, in the mix with Malcolm. We had a story on him today at, with, on TiderInsider.com, and, uh, you know, Gary, just another one of those typical big play guys. They call him uh, Lightning in a bottle. That tells you a little bit about him. If you're going to play down line on the defense for Alabama, you better have some bulk about you. Jafar Mann in this past weekend on junior day, one of the junior days, and got an offer. He's out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Yep, an outstanding player. Gary has a lot of big-time offers already. Alabama now joins the mix. and you know. But Jaf Jafar, when I talked to him, he was pretty straightforward. He said it's going to be very difficult to beat Florida. Uh, the Gators lead right now. Uh, he, he really likes Miami. It's probably a little bit too far from home, but Alabama, Auburn, and Tennessee also in the mix. So, you know, it's a long way off. We'll see what happens. Maybe a two for one out of Stone Mountain. Alabama also likes his teammate, athletic linebacker Raphael Kirby. Well, and, and, and he's also a guy that, that's, uh, you know, looking at Florida very hard right now. So, uh, be interesting to see how, how his recruitment develops. But he's an excellent player, Gary. And again, he picked up an offer this weekend as well. That's our recruiting update for this week. Let's take some phone calls. First on the list tonight is Joseph in Tuscaloosa. Joseph, welcome in. Hey, how you doing today, Gary? Ronnie, how y'all doing today? Doing well, Joseph. Now, I was sitting there and wondering at the Bobby Miller Center, I peeked out the SEC schedule. For one, I saw last year that we had six teams in the SEC that had bye weeks before us. Now, this year we got four. Now, we got Vanderbilt, Ole Miss, LSU, 
in Auburn got by with the fourth. Should that make it any better? Yeah, I think it's a little, having less teams of bye weeks is going to help Alabama, no doubt about it. And I actually think Auburn is going to play a game this year. They're going to play Sanford before they play play Alabama. So, yeah, having uh, that's something that's been addressed. It's been unfair in the past. There's no doubt about that. Nick Saban's never made an excuse, but it's hard week in and week out when you're getting ready to play a team that's been preparing for you for two weeks and you're coming off yeah. a tough game. But I, I think if you look at the schedule, isn't Alabama's off week before the LSU game as well? So, I mean, that kind of equals yeah. out. It's a lot better situation this year, Joseph, to answer your question. I think more of a friendly schedule in that regard for the Tide. All right, CB is also in Tuscaloosa. CB, what's going on? Not much, man. I tell you, we used to take bubble baths. We ain't on no <laughs> bubble. And uh, I tell you, the job Coach Grant's done with this bunch, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. And I don't really brag on basketball coaches, but he's done a fine job, gentlemen. Uh, he's done, absolutely done a terrific job, and, and we can talk more about it. I think the thing that he's done with this basketball team is he identified what they had to do to win. They got off to a slow start. They kind of changed their personality a little bit. You know, let's be honest. Charvez Davis had a nice game against Georgia, but this is a team that's perimeter challenged. I mean, they don't make a lot of jump shots. And when you don't shoot it well from the outside, you're constantly having to pound it in the paint. You don't score a lot of points. Your margin for error is not that great, but defensively, Rodney, they just lock you down. Half court, full court, steals, they force turnovers. I mean, this is a team, you know, I, I've said there are athletes playing basketball, and that's probably not fair. There, there's some good basketball players on there, but they take advantage of their athletic well, ability. I, I, about I tell you, I think the most impressive thing he's done, Gary, is, is, is he has instilled, you know, his program. He's mm -hmm. in, and the players have bought into it. I mean, you look at how hard they compete. I mean, they fight. They, uh, as I said, they compete really hard, Gary, and, and, and that's the main thing. That's what you really look for. And, you know, again, you don't want to sell them short athletically or talent-wise, but certainly, you know, the things that they've done, they've overachieved. And, and I think that has a lot to do with what he's instilled in them and how they bought into what he's had to say. Well, he's my SEC Coach of the Year, I can tell you that. All right, we'll be back with more phone calls right after this. All right. All uh... right. We're going straight to the phones, John? All right, let's go right back to the phones, and let's start with uh, BT real quick. BT, how are you? And Rodney, okay. uh, I want to ask you, what's Alabama football season going to be like for next year? And Gary and Rodney? Go ahead, Rod. Well, I, I think, BT, it should be pretty good, and I've said many times, I think when you look at it, uh, you know, they returned several offensive linemen. Of course, they have to replace James Carpenter. With, but I, th I think Aaron Douglas, it's going to be interesting to see how he develops this spring. Obviously, you've lost Trent Richardson, uh, rather uh, Mark Ingram. Trent Richardson should step in nicely there. But again, you can't really replace the what I consider the heart and soul of the offense. And you had, uh, you know, uh, Greg McElroy, the experience that he brought at quarterback. You're going to have to break in a new quarterback. Two young, talented guys there and A.J. McCarron and Phillip Sims. And then you know, Julio Jones on offense, you're going to have to replace him as a wide receiver. You don't really have anyone that can do that, but they do have some young guys, Kevin Norwood, Kewan Malone, DeAndre White, some guys that can step up to help, you know, a guy like Marquise Mays and, and Darius Hanks. So they should be fine on the offensive side. Gary, you look on the defense, and, you know, you got a lot, lot of guys coming back. Courtney Upshaw, we saw how he finished the season. Of course, we know, you know, how he was hampered with that bad – ankle throughout the year. Uh, Dante Hightower just started kind of coming back into his own. Uh, you know, Drake Kirkpatrick at corner. D. Milliner is going to be more experienced. you got Mark Barron back. Robbie Green's coming back off the suspension. So those things look really good. Nico Johnson kind of progressed a lot last year as time went on. And, and what about C.J. Mosley? I think he's got a bright future at, yeah. at linebacker as well. So a lot of talent. You know, you just hope to see a guy like a Jesse Williams and maybe a Quentin Dial step up and help on the defensive line. Yeah, I think one word we'll be using to describe that defense this coming season is nasty. I think they're going to be really, really good. Let's go out to West Blockton and talk with uh, – all right, it's actually an email from Trey in West Blockton. Does 2012, does 2012 super recruit John Theus have any legitimate interest in Alabama? Well, he, he has interest in Alabama from Jacksonville Bowls and – uh, yeah, he does, Trey, but, you know, I talked to John a couple of weeks ago, and he said he's probably not going to do anything in terms of visits till either later in the spring or the summer. So, uh, you know, we'll find out then. All right, let's stay in West Blockton and talk to Kevin. Kevin, welcome into the program. Oh, I was just wondering if um, Alabama was going to change their logo. And not that I know of. You know anything about that? No, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming they they haven't had the, the current A in place that long. I'm don't think they're going to change anything, Kevin. But if we hear about it, we'll pass it on. I can let you know that. Another email. This one's from uh, Tuscaloosa. Brian, who will back up Trent Richardson? Rodney, the obvious choice is uh, Eddie Lacy, but he's going to have some competition there. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's, uh, you know, you look at D. Hart's come in and, and Jostin Fowler's 
going to be a, a redshirt sophomore. So you're right, Gary, he will have some competition back there and uh, going to be interesting. It could depend on the situation, but Eddie Lacy has a, has, a, has a bright future. Yeah, those two, uh, Richardson and Lacy, could be a dynamic duo just like Ingram and Richardson was last season and the season before that too. All right, we're going to take a time out. We'll be back to uh, wrap it up right after this day with us. And Rodney and I are outfitted again tonight in original elephant wear shirts from the locker room, home of the original elephant wear, located on the University Strip, a Tuscaloosa tradition since 1964. Go by and see all the good folks at the locker room. Check out all their original elephant wear. They've got shirts, they've got ties, they've got pants, they've got pullovers, and much more. Of course, also a great selection of uh, separates and suits as well. Or you can browse their inventory online at... Uh, www.locker-room.biz. The locker room since 1964, a Tuscaloosa tradition. Let's check in on the Bama baseball team. Rodney, big game tonight against rival Troy. The Tide had a 3-0 lead in this one, but the Trojans have rallied, and right now as they play in the bottom of the seventh, they are tied 3-3. The WBA home team sports, Todd Hoyer on hand for that ball game. We'll have all the highlights and the post-game uh, reaction tonight on the news at 10. All right, it's dinner time. Tonight we're going to dine at one of our favorite places, Buddy's Rib and Steak in Northport. Come on by and join us tonight at Buddy's for supper if you get a chance. And don't forget, if you missed any of tonight's show, you uh, can catch it on our website, WVUATV.com. John Huddleston will have it posted later on this evening. Of course, we've got a replay of the program coming up tonight at 1035 right after the news. Well, that's going to do it for this week's program. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching TITV, and we'll see you again next week.